building. something that he did for you that couldn't nobody do but him you are Jesus 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 what a wonder you are Jesus 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 what a wonder you are oh, oh Jesus extensive worship because worship is not what I do it is who I am some people say I worship God and I'm a worshiper and that's what I do in service but that is how I live by waking early and giving God the glory for all that he has done all that he is doing I'd like to give honor, great honor, to this great man of God and his precious wife. You all can put your hands together. We honor the Lord for you tonight and for all that God is using you all to do in this region and to all of the pastors and 
the evangelists and the teachers that are present in this place tonight. I honor God for all of you all and for all of the people that are in the overflow room, wherever you are. I am asking that tonight you don't become impatient about being there and that you would be patient enough to hear what I feel that my father has sent me to say. And I know that for a fact that I am on divine assignment. And I had an opportunity to take a trip that I feel not only changed my life, but confirmed my life. And since then, I think a little before that it started and God began to talk to me intensely about the times, where we are and what he's about to do in all of our lives. And so I became extremely careful about my engagements and my acceptance because I know that I am in a time and an hour where I cannot waste oil. I cannot, even for the sake of relationships, some of my relationships with some of my pastoral friends have been somewhat shaken because I cannot come even because we are in relationship because I have to pour oil in the containers that have the capacity to hold what God is saying and it cannot be church as usual it cannot just be a service as usual it has to be the chosen vessels that God has placed on the calendar of time this is not just a date of uh, the convocation. This is God's date. And it's the date that he has designed for all of us to be in this building, even myself. And so when the Lord begins to pour the oil, not only do we have to be able to hold it, but we have to be able to interpret it and articulate what it is he is saying. Because many times the father is speaking and things are being lost in translation. And what do I mean by lost in translation? Because depending upon the grade and the depth of the person that is delivering or trying to deliver what God says. Something can be lost in the weight, something can be lost in the words, and something can be lost in the power to transmit it. Because what God is doing, he is doing it in the spirit. And so if he's doing it in the spirit, then that which is delivered to the spirit must have the power to reach the spirit. The Bible said the deep calleth unto the deep. And so then we recognize that when we stand in a building, we're not preaching to everybody. We're preaching to the remnant. We're preaching to those that are in the timing of the Lord. The Bible said when the children of Israel went out of Jerusalem, a mixed multitude went out. Which means some crept in among us that had no business there. And so that's why you can't judge what God is doing for you by the neighbor that's sitting next to you or behind you because some have crept in as gainsayers and eyesayers but there are some in this building that the Lord has predestined before time that we all be here for what he's about to unload and download in the spirit and I'm just looking for the people that I came to preach to the Bible said as God began to talk to me in Africa, he began to say to me 
that we are not all prophets, but we all must prophesy. In other words, whatever is going to happen in the next dimensions of our lives, it will not happen because the Lord is going to just send somebody to you. It is going to happen because what is in you is going to come through you. And you're going to begin to open up your mouth and speak what thus saith the Lord in spite of the fact of whether or not you believe it or not. Because this is not, the next move of God is not going to be based upon whether or not you believe it. It's going to be based upon whether or not you can hear it. When Lazarus was in the tomb, he didn't have faith because he was dead. But his spirit heard the Lord call him forth and he came forth. When the bones was in the dry, dry valley, nobody had a heart to believe. But when the Lord sent a prophet to begin to speak over them, the Bible said, and they stood upon their feet and they became a mighty army. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. The Lord hasn't come to keep dealing with our issues and dealing with our light bills and all of the stuff that we are going through. He come to us now to talk about destiny. He's talking to us about where have I called you to be, not where you are. Many times we spend too much time looking at where we are and not concentrating on who we are supposed to be. And that's where the prophetic is going to come in. You're going to prophesy yourself from one dimension to another dimension. You're going to prophesy yourself until you move your spirit out of the reach of the satanic powers and you're able to tell the devil not here not now not never Woo. thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus somebody said I'm going to say this because even the Lord has uh, at one point rebuke me to, about telling people touch a neighbor touch a neighbor and I said okay God and he said because in this next dimension when you tell somebody to touch their neighbor you are turning the whole room into the school of the prophets and so when you said touch your neighbor you are prophesying to your neighbor what is happening to you because that which comes out of your mouth has come out of your spirit. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. So when I say touch your neighbor, it is because that's the word that God has given me to tell you to prophesy out of your mouth. So touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, my spirit is going through a metamorphosis. Tell them by the time I walk out of this building I will be in a new dimension 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 thank you Jesus thank you Jesus So then we are not wandering tonight. We are on purpose. We're not lost in what he's trying to say or do. We're in the timing of God. So when you look at what God is saying for what you call man of God, the climax is almost as if, and then what happens next? And then after we have been in the high times, what happens next? So he began to talk to me about prophetic protocol. Prophetic protocol. And when we understand what prophetic protocol is, we're not shaken by our times. Understand what prophetic protocol is, we're not shaken by our times. The example of prophetic protocol 
is in the book of 1 Kings when we are dealing with the prophet and I got to, I got to lay this story like this so that, so that we can get to where God is taking us tonight and I'm ready, I'm ready to receive it Father when you look at the story of how the prophet began to address the prophets of Baal and so then God began to help us to understand that before the real thing comes, there's always the counterfeit. And if you don't know what to do with the counterfeit, if you don't know how to handle the counterfeit, then your life will forever be affected by it. Especially when you are a person that have been called, every person that is in this building have been called in some kind of way to the prophetic nature of God or you would not be here. Or you would not be here. And so we don't understand the prophetic protocol and prophetic protocol is that you have to know when there is an enemy but you have to know that this is not the season to fight. God, I'm gonna say that one more time. He said, this is not the season to fight. In order to understand prophetic protocol, sometimes we can miss the timing of God fighting an enemy that it is not time for us to fight. How do I know that God is about to put me into another dimension? Because when the Lord is about to put us into another dimension, he will always allow our enemies or enemies or any things to be present and what we're supposed to do according to prophetic protocol there was a time when you do not mess with the enemy where you permit the enemy to do what he must do or to say what they must say I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me because you have to be confident in what God has called you to do that I can stand back and I can watch the enemy do whatever they want to do as a matter of fact you're not even called of God to walk in divine uh, prophetic anointing until you have the possibility where you can stand and mock the enemy until you can do like Jesus and say go ahead do what you must do quickly because what I recognize is that the anointing of God on my life is about to explode I'm about to go to a place that I've never been before I'm about to experience something in God that I have never Can I just preach in the prophetic right quick? The Holy Ghost said, leave it alone. Who am I talking to? The Holy Ghost said, leave it alone. Because it's a distraction. Because the enemy knows what God is about to drop in your belly. And he will send. He will send the very thing that he knows will affect the same spirit that is about to house this great power. God said, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Can't, can't mess with that right now. Can't touch that right now. Can't put your focus there right now. Woo, God, you, ho you hollering at somebody in here. Can't put your focus on that right now. It's a trick. It's a setup. Woo, God, I love you, Jesus. It's a trick. It's a setup. It's a setup. It's a diabolical setup from the very gates of hell because this is the point that God has been trying to get your life to where he puts you in a position where you can not only house power but execute power and the enemy knows my God he already know he can't get you to go back and backslide he can't get you to go back and smoking and drinking so what he will try to do he will try to throw your focus off by foolishness because he know that you oh Jesus I feel the Holy Ghost in here that you about to step into something. You about to step into something. You about to step into something that you didn't have to fast for. You didn't have to consecrate for. It's ordained by God. What's about to drop in this building tonight? It's not about a consecration. It's about the favor of God. It's about y'all. Y'all. 
know it's about what he has ordained to be in this building this very night. Jesus. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Saul was a Saul was a nobody. He was a nobody. Lord, I'm talking to somebody. He was a nobody. He was a nobody. He was a nobody. He wasn't anointed. He didn't have a prayer life. He didn't have a consecration life. He didn't go on a 21 day fast. He didn't go on a 40 day consecration. He didn't spend the night in the church. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. But what he did, he came in contact with somebody that knew God. He came in contact and his life was changed because somebody prophesied. Oh, Jesus. 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 Prophesy. Prophesy. Wait, 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 wait. What do you, what do you mean by, what do you mean by, because... Somebody prophesied. So here he comes. He comes. And this is audacity. This is audacity of the people of God. And this is what the Lord is. And this is what the Lord becomes offended about. Because here, here, here Saul is saying, I done lost my daddy's donkeys. And I can't find my daddy's donkeys. And, and I'm looking for my daddy's donkeys. And, and so his servant says, his servant says, I know a seer. I know somebody that you can go to and um, they can tell you where your donkeys are. Now to tell you that he is out of spiritual intelligence because if, 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 if I done lost a donkey and somebody is introducing me to a seer, then I'm certainly not going to just be concerned about donkeys. But he comes to, he comes to the prophet asking the prophet about donkeys. And when you read in the scripture that washes the prophet immediately ignores his issue. And so sometimes we feel like, you know, God, I'm praying and you ain't doing nothing about it. And Lord, I'm going through this and you ain't doing nothing about it. And God has said, listen, I'm not trying to talk to you about donkeys. I'm trying to talk to you about destiny. We've been talking about your light bill and your gas bill and your kids and all of that stuff. You've been in prayer for years about the same stuff. But look at how much time you have wasted. I've got to move you from stuff to dimensions. God, so God is saying that's not important. That's, that, wait, 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 Lord, you don't know. You don't, you don't know what I'm going through. So he walks up to him and he said, no, no, we're not, we're not looking for donkeys right now. He said, let me tell you who you are. Why you walk around here wanting to find somebody else's purpose? Why your daddy got you looking for donkeys? Why people in the church got you operating less than who God has called you to be? Why you walking around here acting like you somebody that's suffering from some issues that God can't solve? Why you are walking around here being surrounded by people that constantly perpetuate? Yo, come on here. Come on here and keep rehearsing with you what you are going through. I'm sending you here tonight to tell you that the power that's on your life, the reason why the devil won't leave you alone because he knows who you are. No, no, no. no. Listen, the Bible said that the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. But let's talk about where that came from. Can I, can I, can I just minister to you? Because God just told me to walk back over here to you. See, where that came from in the Bible is that they would take oxen and they would yoke oxen. And they yoke oxen because, because they would put like, I live in a, where I lived, the people next door to me got a field full of horses. And so when it rains and I, I drive by the, by the stable, 
they got raincoats on the horses and, and then when it's cold outside they got coats on the horses and when it's hot outside they, they out there hosing the horses down and all of that stuff but see they yoke the oxen because because the oxen are uh, animals that if you put them in the field and you and you yoke them uh -huh, they'll keep driving oxen are relentless they won't quit it can be snowing outside and they'll still go it can be raining outside and they'll still go it can be a storm outside and if you don't go out there and get them they'll still be plowing in the same place see what you have to understand my sir is that when the enemy comes to try to yoke you he yoke the people that are strong he doesn't yoke the people that are weak and so when people start dealing with things and feeling like I feel like I'm under bondage the reason why the enemy has come to try to put a yoke around your neck is because he knows that you are relentless and he knows that if he ever lets you go it ain't nothing you won't do and accomplish for God I'm not hearing y'all I'm not hearing y'all and so while you waiting for God to take the yoke off of you the Lord is saying I can't take it off because I gave you the power and it's in your mouth and when you open up your mouth oh my god it's got to break off of your neck wait 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 wait, wait. sit down sit down because i gotta say something i gotta say something i gotta say something it's gotta it's gotta break it's gotta break off of your neck so i am watch this so i am i am in the position that saul was in so he comes and and I have issues, God, and I need things that I need you to do. And so the trick of the enemy is to keep us praying to God for what we need him to do. Because we don't know that he has already done it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He has already done it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I got to, Lord, this is, this is, this is something, this is something. This is something. This is something. This is something. <laughs> that he has already done it. Let me explain this. He has already done it. And the natural portals, I got to take my time and say this. The natural portals, which is an avenue that leads to glory, the natural portals open up daybreak. So from 5 to 6.30 in the morning, in the natural, all of the hemispheres and the atmospheres rotate. And there's a natural split in the hemisphere and the atmosphere when daybreak comes. And it's called a natural earthly portal. It's called daybreak. And so the only thing that can create a daybreak at night is the anointing. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. And so that's the reason why the enemy will let us praise God, but he don't want us to be anointed. The enemy will let us sing, but he don't want us to be anointed. Because every time the anointing shows up, it's an open portal, which means I'm standing over an open heaven. And if I start prophesying, everything that sits in heaven with my name on it, it's got to come down in my hands. Well, not, not tomorrow. Wait a minute, wait. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Now. Well, I, can't, I can't get nobody to believe that one. I mean, amens is real low on that end. I said, now. I said, now. I said, now. It has to come down now. And my job is to walk into what I have called down. I'm not hearing y'all talk about. My job is to step over in what I just called down. Okay, but then how is that going to happen? Sit down. Let me help you with it. How is this? How is all of this? What's going to cause this transformation to take place? That, um, that I've never experienced on this level before. Because the Bible said Saul, when he got in the company of Samuel, Samuel said, I pour the oil of the anointing on you because the Lord has chosen you to be a king. Not a donkey looker, but a king. You're a king. You're a king. You're a king. They said you're an usher, but you're a king. 
They said you're just on the praise team, but you're a king. Uh -huh. you the one, <laughs> you the one that keep hollering out of the church and keep running around. And they say, oh, that's just Sister Jenkins. She just let her, she, she always shout. But what they don't know, what they don't know is that my radical praise is not just me hollering. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 I gotta get it. So he says, he says, I poured the oil of the anointing on you. And watch this. I pour it on you. And he said, and after the oil of the anointing come on you, you're going to go down. And I want you to meet these prophets coming down. And they're going to be prophets coming from the school of the prophetic. That's why the Lord said to me, turn the room, declare it now. That the room is now the school of the prophets. Because he said that when you, when you come into the company of them. And that's the reason why you got to be careful about your company. After you leave this convocation. He said when you come into the company of the prophets. He said the spirit of the Lord that is upon them is going to jump on you. And you are going. He didn't say you're going to fast for it. He didn't say you're going to consecrate for it. He said when you walk in this building. The minute the prophetic anointing is dispatched, the spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you and you're going to be changed into another person tonight. The Bible said that very same day, that very same day, that very same day, that very same day. He didn't say next week. He didn't say you're going to change as you go. He said the minute we all get together in this room, everything about us is going to be. Maybe somebody said, well, what you going to do with the people that says they that wait upon the Lord? Well, the Lord, the Lord revealed to me uh, in Africa that that scripture is for those that need to wait. I'm not hearing you. If you waiting on the Lord, then you need to wait. But when you come into the mindset of the prophetic anointing of God, you know that there is no weight in the prophetic because you know that everything that you speak, the Lord has materialized. I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. It's not going to be it is. The minute it comes out of your mouth, it's not, oh, I'm not giving y'all. I'm not going to be healed. I'm already healed. It, God ain't gonna work it out. It's already worked out. Hosha Yamasha. Hosha Yamasha. Hold the music. Oh, just sit down. Sit down. Just. just. No. Touch your neighbor and say everything has been resolved because I said so. No, y'all ain't hearing me. The Bible said, I'm giving you the power of life and death is in your mouth. I shall about it. It's got to change tonight because you said Y'all, y'all, y'all sit down because y'all going to make me hurt my own self because I said so, 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 and I don't have to repeat myself. Once I speak it, I don't have to say it again. It's Shalabosha, but it's got to shift. It's got to change because I said, I said, I said. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a wait, 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 w
because guess why it didn't change because the Holy Ghost said you got to agree with me I'm going to tell you why it ain't changed it ain't changed because God spoke it but you forgot to speak it I'm not hearing nobody talk I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me I'm not hearing y'all say that I said it ain't changed because God spoke it but when he spoke it he said now it's your turn it's your turn to speak those things which be not as though they were He said, he said, they walk up. Now, ain't none of us in this kind of shape. He said, when you, when you get into the company of the prophets, two things going to happen to you. You're going to be changed into another man. And the scripture said, that day. That day. Okay. And then the second thing said, and you're going to get a new heart. That day. That means your heart is going to change its mind. Y'all, y'all did it. Which means you walking out of here with the same blue dress on, with the same pink cast, with the same brown glasses, with the same blonde hair. But your heart done changed you. No, y'all, y'all, come on here, somebody. I just wish I had one person in here that was ready to receive that. Because what you don't know is once God flips your heart over and once the word of the prophetic coming out of your mouth begin to switch you over, you ain't got nothing to do but to walk in it. You ain't got to try to fix nothing else. Everything just start gravitating. I'm here. Everything just start coming to you. You ain't got to work for it. I'm not hearing y'all talk about what well, prophets I've been looking for a job. Let me tell you something. When I preached this in church last week, people start getting jobs. Doors start flying open. I said, God, what are you talking about? He said, because in order for the people of God to step over and know what I said, they got to prophesy. They got to open up their mouth. Sit down, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you with what I'm let me help you with what I'm saying. When the prophet got to the valley of dry bones, said we must all prophesy. I said, What are you saying? God, we must all prophesy. He said, When the prophet got to the valley of dry bones, he said, Lord, can these bones live? Y'all, y'all didn't hear the story. Can these bones live? He said, only you know. And the Lord didn't say. Now what's going to happen is, these bones, they going to do this and they going to do that. And I'm, I'm going to show you an open vision. God didn't give him one clue. He, he didn't look down there and see one bone rattle and say, I think I sent something. Because that's what's wrong with us. We won't prophesy because we want to send something. We want to see something. We want God to show it to us. We won't step out in the prophetic and do what God is telling us to do because we need a sign. Lord, one more sign. He said, no, no. They land in the valley of dry bones and what I want you to do, not you ask me, but what I want you to do, I want you to prophesy to that that looks hopeless. If you want to get my respect, if you want to see the power of God come up in your life, you listen, I double dare you, I double dare somebody to take a look at something that looks hopeless and choose and dare to say, I will, I will, I will prophesy. He said, prophesy. Oh, woman of God. He said, he said, prophesy. He said, prophesy. And then he told him, he said, he said, I want you to prophesy to the breath and the wind. Y'all ain't saying that. I want you to prophesy to the breath 
and the wind. Come on here, somebody. Because see, you got to ask the Lord, what do you want me to prophesy? I want you to prophesy to the breath. And I want you to prophesy to the wind. I want you to know that your life is standing still because you won't open up your mouth. I want you to understand the power of the prophetic is once it is declared in the open, there is no enemy against it. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? There was no enemy. There was no enemy. There was no enemy. There was no enemy. There is no enemy. There is no enemy against it because... The prophetic word of God just built a ray. That's how, I can, that's how he showed it to me. A ray. Around. It's like, it's like blowing a bubble. And you take the stuff and you stick it in there. You blow the bubble. And the bubble get big. But in cartoons, they blow the bubble and the bubble get real big. And then all of a sudden the bubble just engulfed the person. It's sort of like that. Because see, when Samuel poured the oil on David, and then Saul sent the messengers to kill him, they didn't even get close to him. The Bible said when they were still miles away, the prophetic anointing that was on Samuel jumped him and hijacked him. And by the time they got to David, instead of killing him, they were prophesying to him. And what was they saying? They were saying what the Lord had already declared. I'm not giving you. They were saying, oh mighty king, oh great one that you are. And then Saul sent two more. And every time they got close to him, the anointing from Samuel, the one that released the prophetic word, the one that released the prophetic word, the one that released the prophetic word, there is a power that comes around you and everything that tries to come after you, it keeps running into the prophecy. It keeps running into what God said. It keeps running into the will of God. It keeps running into the divine plan of God. Nothing can stop the prophecy. Somebody said, well, Lord Jesus. Oh, that lady getting delivered right now. That lady getting, that lady getting delivered right now. Cause see, we don't understand. Watch this. We don't understand. We don't understand the power of it. When God speaks a word over your life, He has already calculated your foolishness. He has already calculated in it the days you go mess up. Oh my shot, we ought to stop playing. We ought to stop acting like when God give a prophecy. If you don't stay perfect, it won't. He done already planned it. He didn't plan the days you was gonna mess up, and that's why He said my word has been tried. The reason why He spoke it because He knew it was going to outlast up anything that the enemy. Oh y'all, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody to recognize that the prophecy is still alive. That the word is still alive. I'm not it. It, your issue didn't scare off the prophecy. It's still in you. You got to open up your mouth. Touch somebody. Touch somebody. It said the prophecy is still alive. No, no, touch. Turn around and touch somebody else. Tell them the prophecy is still alive. Turn around and tell another neighbor. Say the prophecy is still alive. Now turn back around and grab somebody. And say you may have made a few mistakes. But the prophecy is still alive. You may have missed prayer a couple of days. But the prophecy is still alive. Because prophecy is not contingent upon a prayer life. It's contingent upon the favor of God. And if he's Smoke it up. He gonna make it good. If he said it up, he gonna bring it to pass. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor that the prophecy is still alive.
sit down for a second because because I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying wake up and people still looking at me I'm saying wake up I'm saying wake up hey shall ya hope you Sunday hope you show you I'm saying wake up I was asleep the other night and I had an appointment and my sister came in called my name she called me a couple of times I didn't move she said Nita I didn't move she came up close put her hands on the bottom of my feet and said Nita wake up and I woke up and I said Lord what time is it she said it's time to get up you don't want to miss your appointment y'all don't get me see we so busy going to church that we don't understand that this is not church tonight this is a prophetic gathering this is a summit and the person that's standing next to you is the person that when they touch you they say wake up before you miss your appointment wake up that means shake them up that oh y'all come over here that means you got to go back and you got to open your mouth you got to prophesy all over again god said put me in remembrance Wait a minute. Uh-uh, sit down, because I got to do this. Why you, why you, why you sitting there? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because you can't, some of y'all can't do it. You can't do it because religion got you. You can't do it because religion got you. I'm going to tell you what I mean by religion. Because religion will always remind you of your shortcomings. Woo! Y'all ain't saying that. Religion got you. My God have mercy. My God have mercy. My God have mercy. But tonight I prophesy that grace finna snatch you. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. Because religion will keep reminding you of how many times you failed God and how many times you missed. But grace will tell you that my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, let the weak say I'm strong. And if you're going to say you're strong, why you at it? Go ahead and start prophesying. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. You got to rekindle the prophecy. You got to, y'all, come on. You got to tell the devil why the power is available. You got to tell him he's a liar. You, oh, y'all, how, how do I, how do I, how do I, wait, wait, how do I, how do I, how do I? Then you didn't hear him. Oh, I said, I got to give you this, then you didn't hear him. Then you didn't hear him. Then, then some people, some people heard with their ears. <laughs> but you didn't hear this one with your spirit. No, y'all, come on. Somebody said, what are you talking about? So I stopped. Now I got to give you this. Sit down. I got to give you this. I got to give you this. In two seconds, I'm, 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 give me about three minutes and I'm done. I got to give you this. I got to give you this. He that had an ear, watch this. Let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church okay so i said okay god what are you talking about he that happened here so he said look that up he said look at the word here so i looked at the word here and i'm looking at the word here pastor and it says it says hearing it says when a person hears and what has been spoken See, that's why he want a shallow. That's why the devil just want to hallelujah. And I just think I just felt so, I just felt so good in church last night. And the power of God was really heavy in the building. And, and I just got so blessed. No. If pastor's wife in this building and myself, you know, I'm I'm Juanita Button. 
That's my name. That's my name. I know that's my name. My mother gave me that name. 52 years, I've had the same name. Now, why would I spend time if pastor's wife came and said to me, now I know you Gwen Jenkins. Why would I spend hours trying to convince her that I'm not Gwen when I know I'm one need a body? See, that's how the devil make a fool out of us in prayer. We spend hours trying to combat what he's saying when we already know what God is saying. And that time should be spent decreeing and declaring and prophesying. I don't have to argue with you. I know what God said. Satan, Lord, be you. I am one of the Bible. Satan, Lord, be you. I bind you. I am one of the Bible. Devil, you a lie. You a lie. You a lie. I am one of the Bible. That is my name. And devil, let me just tell you something. And Father, in the name of Jesus, since 1959, that's been my name. And I was born in Chicago, and that was my name. And I was born in St. Mary's Hospital. And devil, you a lie. And Satan, Lord, be foolishness. I'm not hearing y'all. Because the portal, the prophetic portal is open now. For the next 90 days in the spirit, God told me that the portal is open. And that's what I got to get to everybody I can get to and say, this is not the time to be in the spirit realm. Arguing with the devil. This is the time to pull it down. This is the time to decree what you want. This is the time for you to get your notebook back out and begin to speak everything that God showed you. Because in 90 days, in the inside of 90 days, there shall be miracles like we have never seen before. Stuff that you've been praying for. It's released. You know what? I see a few people praising God like they believe that. I, I see a few people praising God like they believe that. But that's the reason why I came. I came to prophesy. I came to tell you what the times of the spirit is. And I'm here to tell you that the portal, everything that we need in the next 90 days, Transactions and transitions. Hey, watch it. Uh, sit down for a second because I got to sit down for a second. I got everybody said transactions and transitions. Said 90 days. Say every day. Expect to do a transaction and a transition. Now, some of y'all didn't even believe that. You saying it, but you, you didn't even. Wait a minute, you didn't believe it. Some of y'all, it's hard for you to digest that. Okay, Jesus. 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 See, the reason why you got, the reason why you got to embrace it the reason why you got to get it because if you understand anything about the prophetic watch this if you understand anything about the prophetic whenever there was a prophetic change whenever there was something that God was going to do where he was going to shift it was watch this it was an occasion they didn't have to travail for it when Elijah went and found Elisha he tossed him a mantle and his life was changed are y'all hearing what I'm saying when the prophet walked up to the woman and she didn't have nothing but the last little thing of meal it was a one transaction that changed her life when the prophet walked up to the woman and told her to go and borrow some oil the bible said as long as she had vessels the heavens were open what am i saying the reason why the anointing has got to come up in the praise and the worship out of the vessels so that heaven can stay open as long as god got a vessel that he can fill with oil. We are over a open heaven. A 
Oh, I'm not hearing you. You can't afford. Watch this. I got to say this. You can't afford to come to church no more and sit next to anybody that's got some cute, warmed over praise talking about, well, it don't take all that. No, you just done lost your consecration. It takes that and more. What are you talking about? Who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? Somebody said, my prophet is about him. You don't know. It's hard for me to praise God because you don't know what I'm going through. But the Bible said that when God got ready, my man of God, to open up and drop the walls of Jericho. Y'all don't remember this, but we keep on saying that they marched around the walls and the walls came down and God said everybody marched up. But what the Lord reminded me of is that he had just had all the men circumcised and they were still sore and they were still in pain. But God said still march up. And when God said shout up, the men was in pain. But I don't care what y'all say. Y'all can say what you want to say. But it's circumcision that brought the wall down. It was the cutting of the flesh that brought that wall down. It just wasn't praise. So God showed me that a different praise is about to come upon the men. God showed me that the men are about to take over the house of worship. I'm not giving y'all. God showed me that the power is getting ready to drop again on the men. My God! He said that the walls in the church can't come down until the circumcised men, until the men that's been through hell, until the men who done lost their jobs, the men who done almost lost their mind would stand up and say, God, I'm in pain, but I will praise you. God, I'm sore, I'm weary, but I will praise you. Somebody give God a shout. So he says, the prophetic switch has taken place in the spirit realm. Y'all ain't said, he said, he said, the women have been weeping and travailing in the temple. He said, but now I need an army of force to push the church through to the next dimension. And it ain't in women, it's in men. Y'all ain't saying that. He said the men's praise uh, is going to erupt something in the house. Uh, I'm not hearing y'all. He said in the next 90 days, uh, the men can't be cool. Uh, the men can't be worried about their alligator shoes. Uh, the men can't be telling them I'm going to keep my towel. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, every man in here, uh, take your towel off. Uh, take your jacket off. Uh, he said all night prayer is going to be with men. He said the snot from the men is getting ready to be on the altar. The snot from the men is getting ready to be left on the back of the chairs. Somebody in here. Oh, that's it. He said preachers. He said pastors. He said deacons. He said I'm choosing those that are full of the Holy Ghost, up somebody, up every man, up just go to running up. God said, Get free up tonight. Up it's time to be free up, it's time up to take us in up. All the men up take us into the power, take us into the anointing up, make the walls come down up. God's calling up on the army up. And I prophesy up to the valley up. A drop on up. Drop on to me and up. Drop on to me and up. I command you up to come alive up. I command you up to be an army up. I command you up. Stand up up on your feet up. Somebody shout. Wait a minute. 
wait a minute. I got some questions to ask. And I'm going to see if the men can answer the questions. Who be our Shundi? Who be our Shutta? Who be our Shia? Who be our Shundi? Baby, come from the back with your towel on your shoulder. If you're a man, come down here. I got to ask y'all some questions. Can I ask you this, men? Who led the children of Israel out of Egypt? A man. I got to ask you something. Who brought down Jezebel? A man. I got to ask you something. I'm not hearing y'all. Who caused it to rain when heaven was shut up? A man. I got to ask y'all another question. I'm not hearing y'all. Who saved the people from their sin? Then you better come over here and step over into your calling. Hashanah. You better open up your mouth. your house laying hands on your family decreeing and declaring I'm not hearing y'all talk about to me he said the men uh, got to go back uh, to crying out like warriors uh, y'all not hearing me y'all not hearing me who am I preaching to right now who am I preaching to right now who am I preaching to right now come on God said to me uh, he said we're trying to push it through uh, and the church uh, it's trying to push forward uh, to the next dimension of the revival. Uh, but we're about to push forth a freak. Uh, I'm not giving y'all. Uh, I'm not giving y'all. Uh, it's got to be balanced. Uh, I call you the head. Uh, now be the head. Uh, I call you to stand God. Uh, now stand God. Uh, I call you to war. Uh, now war. Uh, who am I? I sent you into the battle. Now open up your mouth. show out he didn't call fire and as a matter of fact fire didn't come down from heaven so that God can prove that Elijah was the real prophet because I know that's how we want to read it but when I kept reading it he said read it again I read it again he said read it again I read it again and then I saw it he said and when Elijah told the prophets of Baal build your altar and go ahead and call on your God they were calling on their God. Can I paraphrase? They were calling on their God because they wanted a pretty church. They were calling on their God because they wanted a car. They were calling on their God because they wanted a house. Y'all ain't saying that. Because they wanted a uh, uh, because they wanted a shopping spree. They were calling on God because they wanted God to give them a Mercedes. But when Elijah began to call down fire, he built the altar because God's people had left God and when he built the altar he said fire I'm calling down fire because it's time for y'all to repent and the Holy Ghost said that the men of God is going to call down fire but you call it down because the church is in trouble you call it down because the people of God don't believe God the way they used to you got to call it up so that faith can return in the household of faith you got to call it up to cancer try up you got to call it up to age try up you got to call it up to sick bodies are healed you got to call it up to the anointing call somebody open your mouth and start jump When I count to three, when I count to three, 
all over this building, all in the overflow room, wherever you are. When I count to three, see what you, yeah, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, in the beginning, God made the heaven and earth. Then the Lord made man. Then he put man to sleep. And he took woman from man. So in the beginning, what began the world, what began the human creation was men. Did y'all get that? He said, I'm going to count to three. And he said, when you count to three, every man that's in this room, the way you're going to praise God, watch this. The Lord is going to cause the revival of every prophecy that's ever been spoken over every person in this building. And I know y'all think that I'm just saying words, but I'm going to give it a time, Lord Jesus. I'm going to give it a time by Wednesday of next week. If I be a prophet, by Wednesday of next week, you're going to begin to see the signs of your prophecies starting to matriculate down to you. By Wednesday of next week. No, I'm not hearing y'all. No, I'm not hearing y'all. I went to Africa and got my mind back. I went to Africa and the Lord gave me the scripture that said in the book of Revelations that when the enemy sent the flood, he said the earth opened up her mouth and she helped the woman and the Lord delivered her. And the woman God said represents the church, the body of Christ. And he said when we open up our mouth tonight, we're going to swallow up everything the devil has shot in your direction to hinder the prophetic call of God. You're going to swallow it up. I'm not giving you. And when you swallow it up, you shall deliver. that's going over this building from this altar when I count to three the Holy Ghost said go back to praising God the way you did before you became a deacon before you became a pastor he said go back and give me the kind of praise you gave me the first time you got the Holy Ghost the first time you came seeking me he said I'm restoring what the devil done stole from you he said if you obey what I'm giving my servant I'm going to restore your praise I'm going to give you back your holler I'm going to give you back your roar and the building is going to shift into divine purpose and Bob Wednesday of next week we shall see what God has said with his mouth one Two, three, go! Everything be returned! Everything be returned! I decree it! I declare it! We restore every prophecy. Come back to life. Every word that was spoken by God. I decree it now. Come back to life. Come along. And it is so. And it is so. You better 
shout like it's so. You better praise him like it's so. You better magnify him like it's so. No more delays. 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 No more hindrances. I don't think y'all believe it. Hoshi Abba. Come here, second. Second and say, Some of us in there. She No more hindrances. No more. Delays what I have spoken of this night, it shall come to pass. Somebody shout. No more delays. Y'all don't know what I see. Businesses are opening up. Shout out to Koshaya. Three people in this office. Your business was in trouble. God's turning it around. By Wednesday. By Wednesday. Some of y'all that's been unemployed. You get ready to get a job. Somebody better praise God. No more delays. No more hindrances. y'all think that what's happening in this building is happening in Alabama but it is happening in the universe the Lord just used this building to set the church back in order I'm not giving nobody to talk to me this ain't Alabama this is universal somebody better get God a praise what's happening in this building is happening in dimensions it's happening in realms it's happening in countries. It's happening in states. He has prophesied to the nation from this building. Divine order. Divine order. Divine order. Everything in your life. If you're standing in this building, everything in your life is coming under divine order. Everything in your life, the Holy Ghost said after tonight, you ain't gonna even have to battle real hard with addictions and stuff that you've been trying to stop doing. He said tonight, he shifted your spirit back into divine order. Divine order. Divine order. Divine order. Divine order. Divine order. He said prophecy. He said prophecy. And why prophecy? Because only certain things can happen with only a prophecy. Your life doesn't lend the space for it to happen. Your issues doesn't lend an avenue for it to come through. Where you live and the name you were born under 
doesn't give you passageway for you to receive what you desire. It must be prophesied to you. Prophecy is your only hope to divine destiny. Yes. Yes. Prophecy. Prophecy. Meet your day. Meet your day when you open your eyes in prophecy. When you wake up in the morning, wake up saying, I decree and declare the blessings of God shall overtake me today. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Can I give you? Can I give you a prophetic declaration that God gave me? That it works for me every time. It works for me every day. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, for the rest of your life, the Lord shall exceed your expectations. That means whatever you expected, he's going to exceed it. You better wake up every day and say, today, the Lord shall exceed my expectations. Somebody say that to me. Say today, the Lord shall exceed my expectations. Whatever I'm expecting, He's going to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all I can ask of Him today. Lord shall accept. I don't care what it looked like. I say it every day. The Lord shall accept. I put a demand on the day. And then I tell the Lord, you got until 12 o'clock midnight for you not to be a liar. I said you shall exceed my expectations. Come on here, somebody. You better stamp that in your chest. How do I step and slap yourself in the chest and say, come on, the Lord shall exceed my expectation. You got to put that mark on you. You got to stamp yourself that when you get up in the morning, when you at lunchtime, when you on your break, if the devil stop telling you what you ain't got, if the devil stop telling you what you don't do, you turn around and tell him, the day ain't over yet. God got to 12 midnight. He's going to exceed. Today he's going to do it because I stand not in emotions, but I stand under the laws and the principles of prophetic protocol. And according to prophetic protocol, according to prophetic protocol, when I speak it and I come into the company of prophets, my mind shall be changed about my circumstance. I'm not hearing you. If I wake up tomorrow and I have a headache, it didn't change my name. I just don't feel good. What am I saying to somebody? What am I saying to somebody? The days that you don't feel like God gonna do it, it didn't change his mind. You just don't feel good that day. Oh, come on, hit somebody. It didn't change the prophecy. Come on, hit somebody. The days that you feel like you're doubting God. The days that you feel like you're in fear. It didn't change what God said. Mm. I'm under prophetic protocol. And prophetic protocol is, if I dare to speak it, if I dare to speak it, if I dare to say what is said, if I dare to decree and declare, if I dare to come under the prophetic unction of Samuel and Abraham and Isaac, if I dare to prophesy as they do because the word changes not, if I dare to take the word in the Old Testament 
and put it in the 21st century because that was the obedience of the word in the Old Testament and it cannot change then it must not change when it get to me then it don't get to me and then change it can't it can't so I speak it I speak it and I move into the now of God. You prophesied your way to destiny. Somebody tell you, how you gonna get that done? Just give me a few minutes. I decree and declare right now that all this stuff won't be moved out of the way of God. You. I'm not hearing you. I got up this morning up every morning at five o'clock to pray and I got up this morning pastor and I was getting ready to go into my prayer and I was trying to get into a moment of travail and, and I said to the Lord I said I can't I can't seem to tap it that I'm just God I'm just my mind is just my mind is just and I said to the Lord I said well, God and the Lord stopped me. He said, I want you to understand what prayer is too. It's when you have postured your spirit to be where I told you to be. Not that you always know what to say. And he said, because you are here where I told you to be, give me the confusion. Just tell me what you want me to do. I, and I said like this, I said, God, just... Just work all this out and line all that up. And I, and I got up. I said it just like that. I said, just work all that out and line all that up. And I got up off the floor. And the whole day, that's what he did. He worked it all out. He lined it all up. He sent the right people. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. And I said, God, what's going on? He said, you're finally learning how to walk under the prophetic option of protocol. A protocol that the times and the atmosphere, the times and the atmosphere has to obey your voice. If you dare speak it, the times have to do what you need them to do. He said, prophetic protocol is, I said to man, I've given you dominion. I'm not hearing y'all giving you dominion so when you open up your mouth you dominate your atmosphere you tell it what to do he said I'm giving the people of God back their power and the greatest power that they have is not their tongues it's not their shout it's not their dance it's their ability to prophesy is to dare to speak against the valley of the dry bones. It's I dare look at it. And I hear the Lord saying, in the building, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to move in the bigness of God. Don't be afraid to move in, because it's moving time. It's time to move into, some of you all got visions and dreams and I'm seeing it in the spirit and ever since I've been back from Africa the Lord he took the scales off of my eyes like I was when I was 15 and 16 years old and my my prophetic gift to see was like glass and it came back and I see it in this room and anybody in this building that's with me right now can testify that God has been showing me things Things that I know not of, and I see it. And I prophesy. And he said, there's people in this building that's going out, two pastors. God says, stop being scared. He said, I gave you the vision and I knew you didn't have enough money. He said, but go anyway. He said, go anyway because favor's gonna meet you. God said, favor gonna meet you. I see two pieces of property in here. 
I see two pieces of property in here. Harabo shende, shalaba kasende rebeheye, sabia shende, kandoro shende reha. And the Lord is turning it for you. The Lord is turning it for you, man of God. The Lord is turning it for you. And one of you all where you're renting, you're going to own. The Lord said the deed is yours. He said the deed is yours. And he said you don't have to be rushing because the person is trying to make you feel like they're getting ready to sell it. Ain't nobody going to buy it. It's yours. The Lord said calm down. The Lord said be calm. The God, they can't sell it. They can't sell it. And the Lord said, I'm going to give you another year. I'm going to give you another year to accumulate the funds that you need. Because even somebody is coming to your church. And they're going to come into a settlement. And the settlement and the ties is going to help you to buy it. The Lord said, stop being sidetracked by them threatening to sell it or put you out. They can't. The Lord said, you have claimed the ground. And the ground is yours, said the Spirit of the living God. I don't know who that pastor is, but that's what God said. Somebody give God praise in here. 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 And sometimes, and sometimes when the Lord speaks of expansion, and when the Lord speaks of expansion, man of God, when the Lord speaks of expansion, and we're trying to calculate and look and see, then the vision will begin to shrink backwards. And the Lord said expansion is coming. And the Lord said don't be afraid to move in it. The Lord said don't be afraid to move in it. And God said begin to plan for it. The Lord said begin to plan for it. The Lord said begin to plan for it. Because even those that are supposed to be here and come, they can't come until you start making the room. And the Lord said do not get here and start treating God like he's not God. You've always been a man of faith. And you've always been a man that will step out on it. And the Lord said, do not allow a conservative spirit to cause you to count like David. Because I have given you the supernatural. I have given you unusual faith. Everything you have ever gotten, you've gotten it against what people thought you could have. Even when it was trying to be taken away from you, God still provided. And the Lord said, the things that I have shown you are not just plans, but now it's time for drawings. It's time for you to call for the architects and draw it. For I hear and I feel even in the spirit while I am walking in this building. When I walked in this building tonight, I felt that the building was suffocating me. And I said, the Lord, I said, God, the building is suffocating me. He said, because that's what it's doing to me too. Because what I desire to do in this man and what I desire to do with this ministry, I do not want him to be afraid because the power of God has enlarged itself. But the spirit of God needs a house that he will not be able to, to be suppressed in. For the presence of the Lord is like a human. You would not take a human being and try to squeeze it into a dollhouse. And the Lord said, do not do it to me. For there shall be great. I see the Samaritans coming. I see the army coming. I see the people coming now. And the Lord said, be careful, son. Be careful, man of God. That you not spend too much time on the religious. Because the Samaritans are coming. The people with the purple hair. The people with the earrings in their nose. The people with the tattoos everywhere. I hear the Lord saying that the Samaritans are coming up. That revival is about to break out again. Revival is about to break out again. He said there was a movement that hit your ministry some years ago. And it seemed as if it died down. But God said you prayed and you asked the Lord to bring it back. And the Lord said it is back. And the Lord said this was why there had to be a gathering of your fellowship. Because now those that sit under your ministry and those that associate with you pastors and all they must understand this fire that is about to overtake you and they must understand that those that do not operate in fire you must separate yourself because this fire is about to expand you up this fire is about to blow you up in a sense of this fire is about to finish doing what God started seven years ago said the Lord he said the fire is about to continue the work of his hand the unusual thing the street ministry 
ministries, uh, the unusual thing, uh, the things that God uh, had given you uh, outside the four walls of the building. Uh, the Lord said, restore the vision. Uh, the Lord said, restore it now. Uh, he said, restore it. Uh, restore it. Uh, because that's where the power is. Uh, and that's where the anointing is. Uh, and that's where the wind. Uh, there's a new wind that's coming in your spirit. Uh, and the Lord would have me to say unto you, uh, be not concerned even on Sundays. Uh, but I do not have a message. Uh, for I shall use you on many days uh, to lead the people in the worship. Uh, because what is needed in the house uh, is a prostration before me. Uh, what is needed in the house. Uh, I'm restoring the spirit of David. Uh, and it shall come upon you. Uh, and you shall usher in the ark. Uh, and people uh, shall fall out in the parking lot. Uh, and people uh, shall come in the church on Sundays. Uh, and everybody will be laying down for hours. Uh, and you will still be there at six and seven at night. Uh, for the spirit of the Lord said. Uh, get ready. Uh, there shall be many visitations. Uh, many visitations. Uh, unexpected visitations. Uh, you shall stand to minister. And the Lord will slay you out. Uh, and the spirit of God said. Uh, that when you are slain out. Uh, healings will begin. Uh, for the miracle working power is in you men of God. Uh, the miracle working power for healing and deliverance. Uh, and it shall come forth like never before. Uh, and in the next 90 days. Uh, you shall go through a transformation. Uh, and you shall go through a transfiguration. And think it not strange. Uh, that on tomorrow's young kipper. Uh, it's the atonement of all sins. Uh, and God said it is a day. Uh, that this ministry starts again. Uh, it is a day. Uh, that the refreshing starts again. Uh, it is the day. Uh, that I shall flip it over. Uh, that I shall turn it around. Uh, that I shall get rid of those. Uh, that I will hindrance. Uh, and for every one that leave. I will bring twelve. Uh, twelve to say that I am establishing. Uh, and the membership shall increase up and the following shall increase up and January of 2012 shall begin a seek like never before up you will not be able to explain it and the spirit of the Lord said up you would try to bring in speakers up but the anointing in your house up will be greater than the people that you bring in up for the Lord said I've called you uh, to be the evangelist uh, and the prophet uh, and the teacher uh, and the anointed one and the revivalist uh, in this hour in this place uh, for I shall sit upon you like never before uh, I shall sit upon you in revelation things that you have never heard before uh, things that you have never seen before uh, things that you have never moved in before uh, the fire is under your feet uh, and the land has expanded itself and your feet shall not slip uh, and your eyes shall see beyond years uh, and your hands shall have healing in you and even as you walk by the glory of God shall cause a deliverance in the minds and the hearts of the people said the spirit of the living God I just hear the Lord saying, move the walls. Push it back, move the walls. 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 And I don't it. Every quarter, every quarter the Lord said, the spirit of the Lord said, let this not be considered as a yearly convocation but a quarterly convocation for you shall check on the hearts of the pastors every quarter call a solemn assembly call a solemn assembly every quarter all the churches come together and seek the Lord to make sure that everybody is still with the horsemen and the footmen Elamosha this is not tradition Elamosha Solemn assembly. It's a solemn assembly. Somebody lift your hands up and
we'll never be the same. We will never be the same. We will never be the same. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we will never be the same. We're in the presence of God. We will never be the same. <laughs> We will never be the same. seated put your arms around three women because you don't know what I see in this place oh, and I mean hold them for real and tell them we won't be the same but the Lord has called us to prophesy come on tell your neighbor we'll never be the same because we've been chosen We've been chosen to prophesy. You ain't gonna never be the same because when I see the enemy trying to push, trying to attack you, I'm gonna prophesy to you. I'm gonna remind you of this night. Come on, somebody put your arms around somebody else. Y'all don't know what I'm seeing in this building. Jesus. 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 Come on, hug somebody else. Come on, hug somebody else and just start saying prophesy. Come on, hug somebody else and just say prophesy. Let that person go and hug somebody else and say prophesy. Come on, God said do it. Keep doing it until I tell you to stop. Prophesy. That's all I want you to say is prophesy. 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 Turn to somebody else and say prophesy. The power is in you to prophesy. The power is in you to speak it. The power is in you to take your life to the next dimension. Come on, hug somebody and say, Prophesy. 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 Come on, If you tell them that to somebody and they don't look like they're praising God, let them go and grab somebody that you can sense God on. Tell them to prophesy. It don't shut. When your kids get ready to go to school, prophesy. Lay your hands on their books and prophesy. Straight A's, prophesy. Hey! Hey! It's time to prophesy. The prophecy. When mama can't do it, when daddy can't do it, when friends can't do it, my mouth can. My mouth, your mouth can. Your mouth can. You gonna be alright. Your life gonna be alright. So what? Tell your past. So what? So what? I don't care where you been. Prophesy. Because he got his hands on you. That's why you're here. And your life ain't going to never be the same, baby. Somebody said prophesy. Somebody said prophesy. Somebody said prophesy. Somebody said prophesy. Come on, just one more time. Prophesy. Prophesy. 
One more time, just prophesy. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is in this This is what you don't, this is what you don't understand tonight. And as the Lord kept telling me to tell you, to tell your neighbor to prophesy, watch this. As the Lord kept telling me to tell your neighbor to prophesy. Your spirit man, your spirit man is in you. And your spirit man is closer to your skeletal system. And I want you to know that you are anointed to your bones tonight. No, you don't hear me. I want you to know that the spirit of a prophet sits in you. Just like when the man came by and he was dead, they threw him in the grave. And the Bible said when he hit the prophet's bones, he revived and stood up on his feet. You tell somebody the devil can't do nothing with me, I'm anointed to my bones. Tell them on my worst day. I'm still anointed. Somebody give God a praise. On my worst day. My worst day. I'm anointed to my boat. To my boat. first got up that the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing but now the scripture applies to us as I sit down the scripture that said for the yoke would not fit around my neck because my neck was too fat because of the anointing you better come over here somebody said the yoke ain't gonna fit Cause my neck is too fat My neck is too fat Cause my voice keeps coming out of my neck Because I keep prophesying Yoke don't fit no more I'm too fat for the yoke Turn around and tell somebody I done gained some weight in this service Tell your neighbor I just gained weight in this service My neck is too fat The yoke ain't gonna fit no more Somebody give God a praise! has been established if you're in this building you got sons and spiritual daughters and spiritual sons they have been established even if they're not in this building they have been established in the spirit of the Lord has grabbed them oh y'all don't hear me if you got spiritual sons and daughters the Lord has grabbed them and he has oh come on he has postured them and you watch and see you're going to start getting conversations and phone calls from them and stuff that you've been trying to get them to 
and line up to do. You're not going to be able to believe your ears because tonight posterity was established. And the Lord said, even in your own natural children, even in your own natural children, there has been a change that has taken place. The posterity, oh y'all, come over here. The establishing of who we are to become. Those that have been called to your womb shall come now and not delay. For Isaiah 49 applies to this building. Your sons and your daughters shall come. The Bible says your heart shall be enlarged because the dead sheep is about to give up her wealth. Which means everything that we've been praying for. Yo, you ain't got to say nothing. Because I'll shout myself. I said everything that we have been praying for. Tonight, it has been loosed. Today is going to blow your mind. Pastor, you get your phone ready. Everywhere the Lord has sent me. Everywhere the Lord has sent me. I haven't even been home 24 hours before the pastors are calling saying, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Our phones won't stop ringing. But tonight, tonight, the Lord said to me, when you walked in this place, what I'm going to release, I'm going to release it for all of you. And I'm going to establish your legacy forever. And your posterity shall be established forever. say it one more time I'm going to say it one more time and for the soul that grabs it not believe it but become awakened to it I want you to then picture yourself like Lazarus because you got to get on one side of the fence or the other either you got to be all the way in faith or completely faithless and if you completely faithless, then what he wants you to do is respond since you can't believe. And respond is when I praise him. My faith is shaken, but I'm responding because you're calling my desires to life. I'm going to say it one more time, and I'm not going to say it no more tonight. He said it's all been loosed. You ain't got the faith with Hallelujah! 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 Thank you. 
Jesus spoke something to me. I think I've worn this watch. Release time. 